Hello, welcome back to Python from the Ground Up. This is part one. Uh, we're going to look today at variables and data types. Okay, so um, <coughs> I'm going to be working with PyCharm. So if you haven't got PyCharm set up, you might want to go back and watch uh, uh, Python from the Ground Up number zero, which uh, explains how to get that installed and how to create a new project. Okay, so without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, I have here my uh, program from last time. Okay, um, we're not going to worry too much about this stuff up here uh, to start off with. We will get onto that. Well, the first thing that we are going to do is open up a Python console. So we have to go to Tools and select Python console. What that should do is pop up a uh, console down here uh, and allow you to type in Python commands. Now at the moment you're probably thinking, oh, I don't know any Python commands, that's alright. You do know how to do maths, right? So let's do some maths. Type in some sums. Look, I've just typed in 3 plus 7 and it's given me the answer straight away. Okay, 12 divided by 67. There's the answer. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Um, I'm assuming that you're familiar with uh, plus, minus, divided by, as in the forward slash, and multiply uh, the asterisk. So uh, if I do 976 minus um, 347,896, I get minus 346,920. Excuse me. Uh, and if I want to multiply something, I can do something like 5 times 67. There we go. Okay, I mean, this is nothing new. It's basic maths, but have a play around uh, so that you can see how everything works. There are also three other symbols that you can use in your maths in Python. I want you to have a play around and see if you can work out what they are. I will give you some examples. The first one... Let's do two, two asterisks, not a single one, two of them next to each other, two stars, um, three. That gives me the answer, eight. Okay, two, and then another two of those, and six. That gives me 64. Interesting. What does that do? Okay, here's another one. Two and two divide symbols next to each other. Um, let's do one. Oh, it gives me the answer, two. Okay, let's do 12 uh, divided by... Is it divided by? Who knows? 4, I get 3. 12 divided by 5, I get 2. By 6, also get 2. Okay, that's interesting. So we've got two asterisks and two forward slashes. The third one that I want you to have a look at is this one. Let's say I do 10 and then the percent sign and 6. I get the answer 4. I do 10 and the percent sign 5. I get zero. Hmm. Okay. Wonder what that could be. What I want you to do is pause the video. I want you to experiment with those three different uh, symbols. So we've got the two asterisks next to each other. We've got the two forward slashes next to each other, and we've got the percent sign. I want you to pause the video, have a play around, and see if you can work out what those things do. Okay. So pause the video now actually pause it uh, and welcome back so let me tell you what these things do if you worked out that the two stars means raised to the power of this number then well done two raised to the power of three or two cubed is eight two raised to the power of two or two squared is four if I did three squared I should get nine there it is okay you can also use this to get things like square roots if I did uh, nine uh, raised to the power of 0 0.5 it should give me three okay now it's giving me 3.0 there's a reason for that which we will get on to shortly okay so if you worked out that um, two asterisks next to each other is raised to the power of or exponent then well done so what about this other one two slashes next to each other okay if I just do 12 divided by 2 I should get 6 I get 6.0 okay if I do 12 divided by 5 I get 2.4. Okay. Now let's try that same 
thing, but with two slashes instead. 12 divided by 2, I don't get 6.0 this time, I just get 6. If I do 12 divided by 5 with the two slashes, this time I just get 2. Okay, what the two slashes does is it divides the first number by the second number and discards the remainder. Okay, this is integer division here. Okay, it's only dealing with whole numbers. So 12 divided by 5 is 2. You have some left over, but we don't care about that when we use this. Okay, so if you work that out, well done. Now, going hand in hand with that is this percent sign thing. Okay, if I do 10 percent sign 6, I get 4. Okay, but if I do 10 percent sign 5, I get 0. If I do 10 percent sign 7, I get 3. Have you worked it out? This gives you the remainder. Okay, 10 divided by 6 is 1 and 4 remaining. 10 divided by 5 is 2 and nothing remaining, that's why I get 0. 10 divided by 7 is 1 and 3 remaining. Okay, the uh, percent sign is the uh, modulo sign. Okay, it's mod. So we don't say 10 percent sign 7, we'll say 10 mod 7. Okay, so that gives us the remainder. So you can use a combination of the two forward slashes and the um, percent sign to get some detailed information. So I could do 12 quotient is the name of it, so 12 integer division uh, 5 gives me 2. If I do 12 mod 5 it gives me 2 as well. So I know that 12 divided by 5 is 2 remainder 2. Okay, pretty cool. We are going to be using a whole bunch of different maths as we go through the uh, as we go through the course. Okay, so and it's gonna it, it's gonna use those basic symbols. There might be some other uh, things that creep in, uh, but we will explain them as we go along. So as long as you're confident using these, we are all good. Okay, so you've got a feel for the mathsy maths. Um, let's talk about variables. Okay, what is a variable? Obviously, I can't hear you, but you could you could pretend that I can hear you. So let me just almost right. I don't know. I'm guessing what you said there. That's me trying to be funny. Um, a variable is a place in memory where we can store a value which is going to change throughout the course of our program. Okay. If you've got a value which is going to change, you can assign it a, uh, a name if you like, uh, and then you can point to it wherever you like. It's kind of like um, letter substitution in algebra. Okay, so let's have a look at how that might work. Let's say I want to record my age, and then every year I'm going to increase that by one. Okay, so I'll start off with my age, which is 21, as we all know. Okay, the way that I've done that, I've just typed in the name that I want this variable to be, I've said equals, and then I said 21. Okay, what the system has now done, it's reserved a place in memory, which it's pointing to with this handle, age, okay, and it's put in this value. So it's kind of like created a box and written age on the side of it and it's put in the number 21. You can see which variables are uh, currently active uh, by looking across here. Okay, let's say someone says to me, look, you're not 21 years old, and I say, yeah, okay, you got me. I'm going to have to change the value of my age. Changing the value, dead easy. All you do is type in the name of the variable and again you just put in equals and then you put in the new value. I'm actually 25, yeah, obviously. Okay. If you're not sure what the value um, stored in a variable is at any point, you can just type it in and it will appear down there. I can see the current value of age is 25. Okay. Now be careful because if you uh, try and um, find out the value of a variable which doesn't yet exist, you're going to get an error. Okay. So maybe I had a, uh, a variable called um, I don't know my brother's age. Okay. So I'm going to say my brother's age here. Oh, I get an error. Okay. If you ever get this error, my brother's age is not defined or something is not defined. It means you've probably typed in the variable name wrong. Like if I put ah here instead of age, you can see I've got it wrong. Okay. 
don't ever be afraid of these error messages they tell you a whole bunch of stuff okay you will get more and more familiar with these as you go through okay so I can assign a value to a variable I can also increase the value that is stored in a variable let's say here's my age 25 it's my birthday okay I've just gained a year in age so my age should go up to 25 how do I do that I can say age plus equals 1 okay what this is going to do it's going to add this value on and it's going to store it again in age okay so nothing's output here but if I type in age you can see it's now gone up to 26 now be very careful here if you just type in age plus 1 it will say oh look 27 right but if I now type in age the actual value stored in there is still 26 because I didn't put that equal sign in there okay if you want it to store the value you've got to include the equal sign age plus equals 6 okay that's going to increase my age up to 32 okay there we go you can also it doesn't have to be a plus sign you can use a times maybe I've going to just been I don't know attacked by a wizard uh, and he has doubled my age okay so I could say age times equals 2 okay it's going to take my age it's going to multiply it by 2 and it's going to store it again okay so now my age is 64 makes sense yeah simple right okay you can have multiple variables as well um, in fact we can use multiple variables to solve mathsy problems do you all know the formula for calculating the area of a circle is that a yes yeah um, I can't actually write it particularly well in Notepad, uh, but the area, oh, I'll tell you what, let's say area equals, uh, the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Okay, so what can I do here? I can create a variable called pi. Okay, 3.14159, let's say that. Okay, you'll notice after I've done that, it has created a variable here that means it's assigned a place in memory and it's stored there okay what I want you to try and do is just type in some commands which is going to uh, calculate the area of a circle okay so you're going to have you're going to create a variable called radius and give it a value you are then going to create a uh, variable called area and you are going to use your math skills uh, and the uh, existing variables that you created in order to calculate the area okay you're gonna pause it try and do that and then I will show you what it should have probably looked like okay so pause and we're back again okay so I can do something like area equals pi times oh I'm going wrong here aren't I what's missing let's find out I've got that name area uh, name area name error radius is not defined you've got to make sure that your variables are defined before you try and run the code okay so let's say my radius is going to be 12 units whatever you know, it might be meters it might be kilometers who knows okay and now I can do area equals pi times radius radius squared okay if I now output my area, there you go, it has calculated it. Okay, very, very simple stuff. Okay, um, here's another challenge for you. See if you can um, do the same thing, but for calculating the uh, surface area of a sphere with that radius. Now, the great thing is, you've already got the radius in there so you don't need to redefine the radius you just have to find out the surface area uh, formula okay I'm not going to give you the answer to that I want you to try it on your own okay we are going to move on now to having a look at some other values okay now across here you can see I've got 
four different variables stored. I've got age, which is 64. I've got area, which is 452.38, uh, blah, 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 blah. I've got pi, I've got radius. Next to it, you'll see age says it's an int. Area says it's a float. Pi says it's a float and radius says it's an int. Okay. Whenever you create a variable in Python, it is given a data type. Right? There are a number of different data types. Int is a whole number. Number. Okay. Float has a decimal point in it. Okay. Um, there's also str, which is a uh, string, which is text. Okay. Uh, there's also bool, which is a true or false value. Okay. So there's these different data types. When you create your variable, Python will look at the um, data that you're assigning to the variable, and it will decide what type of data it is. Okay. So if I say, um, let's have um, a new variable called name. Okay, I can say name equals uh, Mr. Smith. Okay, now you'll notice when I'm typing in here, I put quote marks around this. Okay, anytime you use text, you've got to have quote marks around it, otherwise, you will get an error. When I create that, you can see now name equals str Mr. Smith. Okay, it has recognized it as a string. Okay. Uh, let's say um, I'll create a variable called um, awake. This is going to record whether or not I am awake. At the moment, I am awake, so I'm going to set that to true, okay, with a capital T. And you will notice over here, awake has been created and it is a bool data type, a Boolean data type. They can only be true or false, okay. Um, What's the difference between an int and a float? An integer is a whole number and a float has a decimal point in it. Now, be careful because if I have something like, um, let's have my num equals two. Okay, my num, you can see there is an int. If I did my num um, and gave, gave it the value 2.0. Although those are exactly the same value, when I change that now, you'll notice it has changed to a float. Even if there's nothing after that decimal point, it's just like 2.0 or 3.0, it is still recorded as a floating point number. Now, at the moment, you're probably thinking, well, why do I care about that? Uh, and at this stage, it doesn't really matter, okay? I just want you to know that these different types of data exist. Int is a number data type, float is a number data type. Okay? You can do addition and subtraction and multiplication and division, all of that stuff with different uh, number data types. But you cannot do maths with two incompatible number types. Okay? I can't do two plus uh, name for instance okay it's trying to add an integer to a string that's not going to work okay i can add two strings together okay so let's say um name equals uh me and uh let's have another one called your name equals you okay i can join those things together i can say name plus your name okay you can see it's just joined them both together me you okay because the plus here when we're dealing with just text it's not addition it's concatenation it will join those things together okay now as we go through the course we'll be experimenting with those different things so if you don't get it just yet don't worry about it okay now, the final thing for this first lesson is looking at your variables that you have stored and working out what type of data is in there. There is a Python command called type which will tell you. If I do something like type name, for instance, 
you can see it is a string it has given me that information without having to look over here it has given me that information if I do type age it will tell me it is an integer okay if you're ever in a situation when you're writing a program and you are not sure um, what type of data you're dealing with you can use the type command to work it out okay so that's pretty much it for this first lesson there wasn't really um, I mean it, it's important stuff to know what these different data types are um, as we go through I'll be reminding you and recapping this stuff okay um, but things that you need to remember there are a lot of different mathematical functions that you can use plus minus divide multiplied by exponent uh, integer division and modulo uh, there are a number of different data types int float string and bool okay uh, integer and floating point numbers are both number data types so you can do mathsy stuff with them uh, strings are just text okay and um, bools are true or false values okay now as we go through the course we will be looking at uh, where those uh, different data types are most useful and in what situations you should use them all okay but as long as you understand that these things exist at this point it is all good now I bet you are all itching to actually get some real programming done and actually write some programs uh, and have some sort of interactivity and so that is what we'll be looking at in the next video which I'm about to record uh, where we look at input and output so for now thank you very much and I will see you very shortly